Okay, you've seen the title and the thumbnail, but chill out. Let me explain what's going on here before you race off to another video or social media platform to blame Zen 5 shortcomings on Windows 11, because that's not really accurate. So let's not spread yet more information about Zen 5. And I realize I'm only talking to a vocal minority here, but had to give that disclaimer just straight off the bat. Now, there does appear to be a bug in Windows 11 that's hurting the gaming performance of Ryzen processors, both Zen 4 and Zen 5. And we have some evidence to suggest that the issue is a little bit worse for Zen 5, but not much worse, like a teeny tiny bit. We also don't know yet if this issue affects processors such as the AM4 Ryzen models. Uh, we don't know if this is an issue at all for Intel processors, so please bear all of that information in mind. For those of you who have seen our Ryzen 7 9700X review, you'll know that we worked with AMD to try and diagnose our gaming performance, and in the end, AMD concluded that our gaming data was accurate. They certainly didn't claim that it was wrong, but they did note that they were seeing slightly better results internally, but stressed that it was only slightly better. Obviously though, we wanna provide you guys with the most accurate data we can. So I've spent days retesting with fresh Windows installs, different motherboards and memory kits to try and work out what's going on. In the end, after speaking with almost a dozen other reviewers, it became clear that our data was pretty much on the money, so we went ahead and published our review. Now, since reviews went live, AMD's team has been working around the clock to try and figure out what's going on. Again, they weren't expecting Zen 5's gaming performance to be much better than what we showed you, but they did feel there were a few percent missing from the 9700X results. So yeah, it does sound trivial, I know, but like AMD, we wanna make sure that the numbers are bang on. So after more than a few back and forths with AMD, they asked me if I was testing with an administrator account, which sounds like a bit of an odd question. Of course, we're testing with an administrator account. I then explained to them that, yeah, like any normal person, I install Windows 11, create the user account during the install process. And once in Windows, that account is described as the local administrator account. But this isn't actually what AMD meant. There's a sort of hidden administrator account that you can activate within Windows and it has elevated privileges. As I understand it, the local account, uh, the local user account has admin rights, whereas the administrator account is the actual system admin. Seems odd that there'd be a difference, but apparently there is. And as far as I can tell, if the Ryzen processors aren't run on an account with these elevated privileges, then they don't function as intended for bursty workloads. So that means gaming in particular. AMD told me this bug, if that's indeed what it is, won't impact sustained all core workloads. So productivity stuff that we tested, such as Photoshop, Premiere, 7-Zip, Blender, and so on, those applications will not be affected by this issue. AMD also told me when switching between the local user account and the administrator account, they were seeing big gaming performance gains for Zen 5 parts, such as the 9700X. In multiple games, they were seeing this, and therefore they believed the bug to be responsible for the difference between their data and my own review data. Now, I'm not sure why AMD would have been benchmarking using the sort of hidden administrator account, if indeed they were. Perhaps they required the elevated privileges for their automated testing software, or maybe they just found this issue while trying to diagnose the review data. I'm not exactly sure on those details. What I do know is this, AMD presented me with this as a potential scenario to explain why their gaming data was a bit more positive for Zen 5 than my own. And they asked me if I could investigate on my end. So of course I did, and now I can share with you what I found. The first steps to open up the command prompt and type in net.exe user administrator slash active yes. Once all of that's been done, simply sign out and now you will see the administrator account in the lower left corner of the screen. Click that and log in. And now all of your Windows based software will need to be reconfigured for testing as you're essentially setting up a new user account. So with all of that done, let's take a look at the results. So we'll start with Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty because this is where AMD claimed they were seeing the biggest improvement. And they weren't wrong. Using the administrator account, we saw a 7% improvement to the average frame rate. And that's not a trivial improvement. It's an extra 10 FPS, and that would make the 9700X 9% faster than the 7700X based on our review data for the 7700X. However, if we also test the 7700X using the administrator account, we find an 8% boost for that processor, which actually closes the gap between it and the 9700X. Previously, the Zen 5 processor was 2% faster, but now it's just 1% faster. 
So although AMD suggested this might be a Zen 5 bug, it seems they've discovered a Windows bug that hurts both Zen 4 and Zen 5 performance. It might also affect other CPUs for all we know. We haven't had a chance to test them, but we can at least confirm that this does affect Zen 4 and Zen 5 at this point in time. Now, a game where these new Zen 5 processors sucked was The Last of Us Part 1. So I tested that next and found a 6% boost to the average frame rate and a 10% uplift for the 1% lows. So that's a big improvement. However, if we test the 7700X, we also see a 5% boost to the average frame rate. So whereas previously the 7700X was 1.3% faster, it's now 0.6% faster. So again, this seems to be a Zen issue in general. That said, we did find an example in Hogwarts Legacy where the 9700X does see a solid performance uplift using the administrator account, but the 7700X doesn't. And I did triple check this data. So whereas the 7700X was 1% faster in this example, using the administrator account, the 9700X is now 9% faster, and that's a decent margin. A Plague Tale Requiem is another example where the data becomes more favorable for the 9700X. Previously, the Zen 5 part was just 3% faster, but with the administrator account, it's now 9% faster as the 7700X saw no improvement. Things though go the other way in Horizon Forbidden West. Previously, the 7700X was 2% faster in this title, whereas the administrator account increased that margin in favor of the 7700X to 5%. Hitman 3 previously saw the 9700X win by a slim 1% margin, but with the administrator account, performance was identical. We see a very minor change in Homeworld 3. The administrator account boosts performance for both models, but whereas the 9700X was 3% faster, it's now 4% faster, so scaling is basically the same in this example. Both CPUs again become faster using the administrator account in Spider-Man Remastered, but whereas the 9700X was previously 5% faster, it is now 9% faster, which is becoming a decent margin. The administrator account helps correct the 9700X's performance in Starfield, though only to the degree that it now matches, or roughly matches, the 7700X. So an improvement for sure, but hardly anything to write home about. Both CPUs saw a 5-6% to performance uplift when using the administrator account, so the margin here doesn't really change. The 7700X is now a percent faster. The ACC results don't change at all with the administrator account, so the 9700X remains 18% faster, and I believe the big improvement here is due to the increased L1 cache capacity. The Baldur's Gate 3 data also barely changes, so not much to see here, and we see little to no change for the Counter-Strike 2 results. So, across our 13 game sample, the 9700X saw a 4% performance improvement on average when compared to the day one review data. Meanwhile, the 7700X saw a 3% improvement. So, what all of this means is, previously we found on average for gaming that the 9700X was just 3% faster than the 7700X. And when using the administrator account, it's now 4% faster. So, we've improved the 9700X's position by a percent. That's it. If we didn't bother to also retest the 7700X, we might have concluded that the 9700X is now 7% faster for gaming, which would have been a much bigger deal, but in reality, that just isn't the case. So there you have it guys, I rushed to get this out, and we've put our Ryzen 9 9900X review on hold because I didn't want AMD sharing this information with someone else who might have only tested Zen 5 processors and concluded that Zen 5's performance is indeed being nerfed by Windows 11, when in reality, there is a bit more to the story. In fact, there's a lot more to the story. This Windows bug, which AMD has told me should be addressed in a future Windows update, seems to be more of a general Ryzen bug, at least based on the testing that we've been able to do so far. So it's not an issue that specifically affects Zen 5 processors. I need to make that clear. Uh, I think maybe AMD initially thought that that might be the case when they first discovered it, but I'm just speculating there. But the main takeaway is this is not a Zen 5 specific Windows bug. The crazy thing is I think I've been grappling with this issue for a long time now. I know there have been occasions when I've gone and installed Windows for parts such as the 7800X 3D, and it's delivered stronger gaming performance than I was seeing previously, like a week prior. And then after another fresh install, the results go back to what I was seeing about a week prior. And other reviewers have also reported this very same sort of inconsistent performance issue with certain Ryzen processors, especially for these day one reviews that you've seen over the last week. So I don't know if sometimes Windows installs without this, let's call it bug, 
uh, you know, rarely does it install without it, but then most of the time it installs where, I don't know, you require these elevated privileges to work around whatever the problem is. I really don't know. I'm, I'm completely speculating at this point. All I know is I have seen some inconsistent results with, you know, in installations of Windows. You install and it works well, and then you install and it doesn't work as well as it was previously. Bit weird. I don't know if this is the culprit or not, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And it's really important to note that all the information in this video changes nothing about the reviews. The gaming performance relative to Zen 4 doesn't really change, as we just saw. Uh, relative to Intel processors, this may improve Ryzen's position, but that's also just an assumption that I'm being forced to make at this point in time. It's very possible that the administrator account will also boost the gaming performance of Intel CPUs. And ideally, I would have liked to have looked into that before publishing this content, but I would need a few more days to get that testing done. And like I said, my fear was that someone would run with this story and the process create mass hysteria online with claims that Windows 11 is to blame for Zen 5's weak gaming performance, when in reality, that does not appear to be the case. For now, I'm not gonna retest and update all of our Ryzen gaming data. Rather, I'm gonna to wait to see what happens with all of this. Will Microsoft, as AMD suggests, release a Windows update to fix this issue? Dunno yet. But if and when they do, that's when I'll update all of my data. Because right now, if you buy one of these CPUs and install Windows, unless you specifically use the administrator account by following the steps shown in this video, you will be getting the performance that you have seen in the day one reviews. And that's all I have for you on this issue. Zen 5's gaming performance remains highly disappointing, but it's possible Ryzen's gaming performance in general will be improved shortly with a Windows update unless running with elevated privileges poses some kind of security risk and therefore this isn't really a bug at all. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see on that one. Also, as I said, I, I do wanna be clear on this. We haven't tested Intel CPUs, so it is possible this just improves perf gaming performance for all CPUs. So I guess time will tell on that one. But if you appreciated this update, uh, do give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content because no doubt we will have more CPU related gaming content and other stuff coming up on the channel shortly. We also have Floatplane and Patreon if you want to check out either one of those. You get access to our exclusive Discord server where we talk about stuff like this. Monthly live stream which will be coming up shortly for members. A Q&A stuff, behind the scenes content, a lot of cool stuff there so check it out if you're interested. But if not that is perfectly fine and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host Steve, see you again next time.